the principle of going within by meditation can take you to that level. Of course, it requires a lot of steps to go through. But you can go through the steps. First step I just mentioned to you is to experience dying while living. And that will put you into a state of being where you have a much longer life. You will recall past lives in physical bodies. You will recall your past lives in non-physical bodies. That's first step. Second step, and then first step also shows that the sense perceptions which you are using in the physical body are not belonging to the physical body. If the sense perceptions of seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, these perceptions which are creating the whole physical world for us, we do not know the physical world except through these senses. The senses create this physical world. These do not belong to the physical body. They belong to the body which you discover when you die, either by natural death or by meditative meditation and withdrawing attention to the self. Sense perceptions are actually the astral body. They know body. The sense perceptions function like a body like this one. But the sense perceptions are very strong, very powerful in that form. And so you can see, touch, taste, smell, everything without a physical body. That's why you are so light. That's why there's no gravity. That's why there is no power to hold you down. And that experience is available to you by withdrawing attention to the point behind the eyes, which we now call third eye center, because these two eyes don't actually see. We think the two eyes are designed to see. The two eyes are designed to create images. The two eyes don't create the same image. They create two different images. We combine the two images and see the stereoscopic distance and the and this effect, that stereoscopic effect of seeing distance is created because the two eyes see two different pictures. We can go to a 3D movie today and see that we can wear artificial glasses and create 3D image. These two eyes are seeing two different pictures because of their distance. Where do they combine to create the distance? Have you ever noticed that when you're looking at something in the physical body with physical eyes, where are you looking from a single image? If you're looking at the eyes, through the eyes, you would see two images. Where do you combine and where does it become a single image? Where do you see it from? You see it, and that's ex actual experience we are all having. Nobody's saying, I am seeing with the eyes only. I am seeing combined image from behind the eyes at this common place where it crosses like this in the center. We always see like that. Therefore, that seat itself is the third eye center. That itself is the place from where consciousness is operating in a physical body. Not difficult to know. When you close your eyes and you want to know where you are, where you're thinking from, where do you believe you are? That's where you are. People say we are searching very hard in our meditation for third eye center. It's not hard at all. You know where you are. Don't think the body is you. Just forget that part. Say you are in the head, sitting in the head. Where are you? Don't assume you are a body you are looking for or something that you're looking for. Just say, I know where I am and you will be at the third eye center. And that's where you put your attention on. When you do that, the sense perceptions are sustained and never die, at least not for a long time. The average length for those who have gone into that level and seen, the average length of life for the sense perceptions is much more than the physical body, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000 physical years. Do you know we have been using our sense perceptions? The same sense perceptions in past lives will use the same sense perception next life. And that's why the perceptions persist. Now, of course, the eyes are very clear, 20-20 vision, maybe better. The hearing is great, no hearing aids required even for old age, not even a 3,000 years old astral body. But when you withdraw your attention within that body, behind the eyes of the astral self, which is, which is a little different from the withdrawal of attention from the physical body, but 
under the guidance of a trained person, you can go to that level, you will notice that you are becoming unaware of your sense perceptions. You don't feel you have eyes to see, you don't feel you have got ears to hear, they disappear. And what comes up is a total mental grasp of everything, total mental picture in one picture, everything, the hearing and hearing and seeing become the same. All sense perceptions become the same because then the mind takes over what the sense perceptions are doing. To discover that you have a mind that functions independently, the same mind that you are using for thinking today is not a different mind. The mind you use for thinking today becomes yourself. And therefore, that mental state, which we call causal state, is a very great experience. But there you find that these things which we thought were all separated creation were coming from a single source, the mind. The mind itself, which we are using for thinking, is the causal body. It's not a body. We just assume that all bodies are just like this. They are not. The mind is the causal body. And the concepts that are created by the mind work to create the ideas of things and make pictures of singular things in the astral plane. And those ideas create all the physical world that we see here. Even operating as human beings, we are using all those facilities from inside to get the concept, to get the idea, and to make something. Socrates, through Plato, explains this idea, the Greek philosopher, very beautifully. He says, and he, this is a conversation with Aristotle, Plato talking to Aristotle. Plato is learning from Socrates that the world of ideas is more real than the physical world. And Aristotle questions, this is not true. Ideas are in the mind. And this is just a physical world is real. How can you say that that is more real? So then he explains, you are sitting on a chair. The chair wouldn't have been there if there wasn't an idea of a chair. Where did the idea of a chair originate? Go back to that. You will discover to somebody's imagination, somebody's astral thinking, not self-perceptions, somebody thinking inside and came up with an idea that we could have something to sit higher than the ground. And the idea of a chair came up. A chair came up. Today we have millions of different kinds of chairs, but they all came from the single idea. One idea of a chair created all the chairs. If that idea was not there, no chair would be here. But where did the idea of chair come from? The concept that we sit, the concept we sit, yeah or no, where did the concept come from? From a still higher plane, our own mind. The mind created the concept. The sensory perceptions created what would be seen as a chair, and all the physical chairs came from there. Everything that we are ex experiencing here is coming in these stages. The mind is the causal body, and we discover the truth about our destinies, we discover how destinies are made, and so on. We go to our ultimate self and find that consciousness is the ultimate creator of everything, and we find a unique individuated consciousness, which is our soul, which is our reality, which never is born, never dies. Mind even has a life, maybe about three million physical years, or little more or less. But soul is immortal. It was always there, will always be there. That's our reality. We go higher to totality, of course, that is total. All souls are part of it and never separated, only having a separate experience of the many. What a beautiful setup. How can you say there can be greater artists than this who designed this, who set up all this? And who is that artist? We, in our true form, in our ultimate reality. And that's the same artist, the same creative power manifesting in so many right here and right everywhere else in the universe experiencing its own creation. It's the creator experiencing its own creation through several points of view, which we are as human beings. There's just points of view of a single creation, creator, experiencing creation. 